I'm breaking the Africa baby bam identity. Okay. I'm breaking the Jungle Brother identity. Yeah. I'm breaking the Golden Era identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm breaking the hip hop identity. Yeah. I'm breaking all of that. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking any name <laughs> on this body mm. and, the, and, the, and the identity that comes with it mm. and the conversations that come with it, mm. the script. Mm -hmm. I'm destroying it so I can see the clear wall mm. with no writing on it. And I'm breaking through that wall. That's what I'm doing. Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official .com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24 7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Honestly, salutes it. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, not in the usual location, far from it, in fact. Couldn't be more further than the place that we normally uh, podcast from origin. Um, big shout out to everybody, sharers and carers, people that are spreading the gospel on the street culture. We talk about literally that. And if you want more, you can go to the Kellervision app. Um, Kellervision, uh, available on Apple, iPhone. Android <clears throat> and all that business. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hoddle Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Um, I am sitting here with a general, an OG, an original. Some of you may know him from past experiences such as Jungle Brothers, the Native Tongues, um, Straight Out of the Jungle, the 40 Below Trooper, um, with the alternative uh, wave of new music under his belt. This guy's Way more dimensional than you'd ever expect. Africa, baby, bam, inside the place. Jungle Brothers, how are you, my brother? Yes, I'm good, brother. Good to see you. Good to meet you. Good to be out here in Tokyo. Out here in Tokyo. Right? Of all add. places. That's crazy, right? It is. It I is. like to say keep it surreal, and then sometimes it just sneaks up and gets me. That shit just... Get, I mean, you know you have these outer body moments where... All of a sudden, you're in another country. You meet up with somebody because you're my hero. You're right. one of my heroes, mm. and I'm sitting there thinking to myself, I can't, "What's going on?" <laughs> the universe puts us in these scenarios, and and I know you've had plenty of these scenarios throughout your whole career. To even be here now and in a real nomadic kind of way, which I know we were even talking about beforehand. We? It took me a while to like notice that. You know, it, I didn't notice that until like the last. 15 years because I've been mostly on my own like not really only traveling as a touring musician but traveling on my own and the amount of serendipitous stuff that's happened is like hello see like the universe is like hey we got you serendipitous see I love we're that we're doing this we're mm -hmm. doing this and now we want you to turn left and go do that and there's somebody around the corner waiting you know yeah. so I, I, I'm, I'm more aware of it now like I've got more practice with it now I see you're a you're a staunch believer of that that that, that this universal magnet that guides you to certain things is completely out of your control oh yeah, yeah. I mean because there's certain things like being in a group and putting a record out mm. that I had projected like five years before it happened. Like I remember the day I said it was going to happen. You said, kind of, what, you remember the space, the situation? Yeah, I remember the situation and everything. I remember where I was sitting in my room. I remember what I was telling myself. I remember touching the radio and hearing my first rap record. And I was like, hmm. I could do that. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to do that one day, you know, and didn't think nothing of it. And like one thing led to another. I got a pair of turntables uh, one Christmas and I was telling everybody that I was going to come out with a record because I just thought all you needed was a pair of turntables. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's easy, That's right? <laughs> and it's just like one thing led to another, mm. you know, and when those things started to happen, I didn't have... I didn't actually have the equipment or the or the resources to 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 do what I said I believed I was going to do. So it was almost like reverse engineer it. Yeah, so I was just putting that out there, you know. And I know I know that's like 
the zeitgeist that people talk about these days with manifestation and all of that stuff. But like, I was 11 years old. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Like, I actually did that without all the whole self help books and the the Eastern philosophy stuff. I just had this strong desire. Mm. And when I look back, now I, I'm like, there was this big example of like you putting that out there, and from 11 to then 16, your first record comes out, 18, your first album comes mm. out, and you also wanted to travel. So at 18, you get on a plane in September and you go to uh, on a 30 day tour mm -hmm. around Europe and England. Six passports later, sixty countries yeah, later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your passport looking like a manga comic, and it's just, yeah, <laughs> like, what the hell's going on? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, it's self evident. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You've been doing this like for a long time now, like mm -hmm. so. You know, I'm, I've been off the beaten path. You know, the 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 beaten path meaning you know touring musician, Jungle Brother. I've been off that beaten path for about fifteen years. Yeah. Now and yeah. the serendipity has continued. Yeah, I mean, I have all sorts of stories and chapters in my life that happened outside of being in the Jungle Brothers that I couldn't even begin to like divulge, like in in this interview. But it's just to, to prove that serendipity is real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's before just... the self helps on YouTube and everything, there was this thing called life where you'd actually have to believe in this thing in the now, like this universe is here to guide you and you're ju it's just a conduit. You're just a conduit. Yeah, and it's, it's, it's really just moving with it. Moving mm. with it and also being open and then seeing things fall into place. I, I, I told my brother Jai, it's like an Easter egg hunt. You know when you go on an Easter egg hunt <laughs> yeah. and you, oh, you look at a spot and you like, it's like a little, you feel like there's a clue, but you go past it. Yeah. And you keep looking around and you keep looking around. And you keep circling. And you, again, you look at that spot. And, and, and that's in that instance, to you, you think it's not there. Mm. But then on the other side, it is there. You know what I mean? It's like, so in these moments where it's, it's of serendipity, if you look at it one way, you're like, nah, this isn't what I want. Mm. But then if you're open and you look at it another way, it's like, no, this is exactly what I'm... I have to work with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. Yeah, 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 absolutely. I have to work with this. This is this is that. That's right. You know it, I mean? it's, it's, the, it's finding the gift in that. Yeah, finding the gift in the moment. It may not be the thing you immediately want, but you've got to learn and develop a yeah. pattern up to it. Yeah, you got to open up to it and be like, wait, if I reinterpret this, this is the way it's coming in. This yeah. is it. Yeah. Does that come with fear? Sometimes. Um, I think the fear part of it is like when you have like, um, you're trying to put something out there to make it work and you want it to be like a safe leap from one lily pad to the next and it's not exactly going to be like that. Mm. So the fear comes in, you know, but when you at the base level, when you calm down and you're really still and you don't put too much um force on it mm -hmm. or the way you want it to be you just put it out there and let it let it go just let it go and then you see what comes in and then you make your choice on based on that then the fear like subsides mm -hmm. you know you know you you, you let go mm -hmm. of like that whole comfort of needing to know. Yeah. But you can't know because it's not happening yet. And you're asking, well, how's it going to happen? Mm -hmm. When's it going to happen? Yeah. That's when the fear kicks in. Yeah, yeah, you start yeah. Start freaking out. Anxiety. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, everyone's just, just become one with the moment. But with a track record, and this is what life brings, you understand? Yeah. With a track record, like, of experiences whereby you're saying, well, actually, it worked out like this last time, so there's a good reason why it's a workout right this time so i mean you know going back to some of your early inceptions of creative work obviously jungle was i know understandably that it, a lot of it's a lot more sepia and uh, and and foggy um now as time's gone on yeah but you know just to say you took it to the mountain was an understatement so if you reverse engineer those processes yeah. and you reapply that reimagine it in a 2023 kind of way yeah it's still the same coordinates yeah yeah 
And that's where the new energy is now. Mm. It, it, it could be the same coordinates, but I, I, I'm realizing you have to charge up with a new energy. Mm. You know? Mm. You can't sit back and go, well, it happened like that. I expect it to happen like that again. Yep, yeah, right. By doing the same exact thing, mm. like maybe I should get another pair of turntables mm-hmm. and maybe I should collect a bunch of records and mix them together. <laughs> like starting right from scratch. And make a tape <laughs> and then somebody's going to put me in the studio mm-hmm. and then I'm going to be like, wow, I get to try all my ideas in the studio yeah. and put my vocals on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. That's not the way. Whole different vibe, isn't it? Whole different vibe. Like I literally, you know the scene in um, The Matrix, the part two, mm-hmm. when he's on the platform. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's trying to get off the platform. Mm-hmm. And he's just there, stuck. I that that is the position I was in before I moved on into this new journey that I'm on. It was so frustrating because I was just like copying and pasting the past to keep my head above water. So doing the things I had done in the past, mm. you know, celebrate the 30th anniversary of Jungle Brothers. Um um, do some DJ gigs yeah. around England. Uh, you know, bark up the old trees. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and pick the leftover fruits. Yeah, so to speak. And it was just like you get back home and everything is safe. Um, you know, and then it's like, but there's something that I want to do. There's mm. something else mm. inside. Like there's this voice inside that's like, I want you to listen to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, totally. And that was the punk rock thing. Yeah. That was the punk rock thing for about 15, oh, plus 15 years. Mm. It was like this creature in a box that was like punching to get out. And it was like, you're more than that. Mm. Mm. And the more I listened to that, and the more I went for that, then I started to create, like you said, those coordinates. Yeah. But in a new, as a new animal. I've totally been there. <laughs> totally and utterly been there. And it's also about the passion that you hold for that thing. That's the, that's the thing that drives you to, to that place. And it, that, that should, could and wouldn't diminish the more that you feed it energy. Yeah. Yeah. So, cause so, <clears throat> so now that I'm on that platform, mm. whereas I was before trying to get off mm. and it would just come back in on the other side, mm. now I'm sitting on that platform and I'm like taking music theory lessons, uh, taking songwriting lessons, learning the craft, um, doing boot camp on the beach three days a week with a British military trainer. Oh, God, that's good. Oh, uh, yeah. Training in boxing with the Senegalese Olympic champion. Uh, had a personal trainer, cycling, uh, jogging 20 miles, walking 20 hours, meditating. That was the cherry on top. That was the thing that really turned it over, the meditation. Because, wow. because then I made peace with being on the platform stuck between two stops. Mm-hmm. And then after a while, I was like, I'm not stuck. I'm growing inside. Yeah, that's right. Like I'm, I'm reapproaching what I do mm. with new knowledge mm-hmm. about the craft yeah. that I wasn't uh, looking into because I was just going with what works, using my natural ability, using my natural talents, mm-hmm. using the songs that people know from 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 the Jungle Brothers to the point where it was like, oh man, this is becoming like karaoke of my own material. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. it's just going through the motions. Yeah, and and, and anyone anyone listen, would appreciate that. I think when you start. Um, from the inside out. Yeah. It's like a self-treatment. It's a weird one because in doing so, you learn to develop a a, 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 a patience, a real a sense of patience with yourself. Because yes. you, especially when you go to the gym. Like when you go to the gym or anything yes. that's like yeah. of that nature. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Oh, like, my trainer would always say, my trainer would say, take the long road. Yeah. Take the long road. Take the long run. Uh-huh. You'll just you'll de- you'll develop muscles all the way till you're 70, 80. Yeah. They always keep developing. Just just take the long road. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not it's not an overnight, and it's certainly it's all about the minutes that are the hours, and you really have to scale back on what you're you're dealing with. You are living in the moment. Just, yeah. just manage that extra push of weight. Yeah, it's, it's fucking mad, isn't well, it? Well, the meditation really helped me with that because when I started to pick up the guitar 
or play sit at the piano or read sheet music or anything that was like a challenge or or jog 20 miles mm -hmm. anything that was a challenge the meditation gave me like more space I, I sat still for so long so that when i started jogging for example i was like first mile i'm like calm, calm. down don't yeah. stop thinking about mile 15. yeah you know when i pick up the guitar and practice my open chords it's like Stop thinking about how you're going from one chord to the next and your fingers keep tripping yeah. over each other. Yeah, yeah. Calm down. Because Jimi Hendrix or Eddie Van Halen, they weren't thinking about doing what they ended up doing. It's, it's, a, it's the love of it. It's the love of it also, but it's, it's, it's muscle memory. Yeah. It's, it's, build, it's, it's a building up where you're programming yourself and then it's building, you go to sleep and then you wake up and you, you have more muscle memory and that compounded interest. Mm. You know, that's what my music theory teacher would tell me. like, go home, this is your homework. Don't try to do it all in one seating. Do a little bit, go and then go to sleep immediately. He said, the brain is going to drip feed it to you. That's right. So, but all of that started to sink in when I did the meditation, when I was like, everything off. Mm. No goals, no uh, urge to do what you want to do. Um, just everything off. Mm. And get in this infinite space where it's like, you even push death to the side. You're yeah. just a part of eternity. You know what I mean? Like, there's no time. Yeah. Okay, so don't rush. There's no such thing as time. Mm -hmm. So stop rushing. Stop pushing yourself. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Mm -hmm. That really helps. Death is completion. That's what Extentation said. Mm. He said. He said that in our lives we all die hundreds of deaths. Mm. Mm. But when you reach the end of your life, that's completion. Yeah. That's something so profound about our idea. I mean, I'm in the frame of mind too, like, you know, th that like the, the spirit that animates this body moves on. Mm -hmm. So for this spirit, there is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, life, essence. Mm -hmm. Whether that's, you know, um, you know, power or light, whatever you want to call it, you know. And so, like, that's what's in this body now. And then you shed this body and you go transform into back to the source mm -hmm. or into another form you know and that's mm -hmm. the eternal part and if yeah. we had if we could identify with that and less with the body then we'll see that the death is something that happens to the body mm -hmm. not the light and the energy that w w that we are at essence it's just something that happens to the body yeah 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 you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. totally it's like taking these clothes off. It's like these are old clothes. Burn them, mm -hmm. but you're still walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah it's totally. like oh, that outfit's dead. It's but, deep. But the person wearing that outfit's not dead. If yeah. that makes sense, it makes complete sense. I, yeah, I think as artists and creatives, we have a lot of time to explore these theories. Yeah. Although it, they're widely available online, I mean, there's no excuses for you lot. Like, yeah. Um, and there's no excuses for you not to have discovered um, any one of the many musical uh, outings that um, that our BAM has been on yeah. many a years. <clears throat> and I think for its time, hence why your your versatility in, in the music world and these theories and what you talk of, yeah. they hold so true to the, I don't know, the native tongue philosophy. Yeah. Um, and the fact that you grew out of such a, golden beautiful era um were part of such a, an amazing collective an amazing group yeah. um uh you know and your your legacy stands true like you guys never really stuck it was genre but then you know i'll house you and tunes like that which yeah. i'm sure you hear conversations about all the time yeah. but you know this wasn't normal back then yeah. you've always pushed yeah always pushed and i remember seeing you in different con con conceptual music um roles and groups and yeah you know You've switched it up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You've gone against the tide. Some of the some of your fans would have been like, what's he doing that for? But, but in my mind, and I'm sure for a lot of people out there, it's like, it stands to reason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? This guy's yeah. part of the Nate. He's part of the a different way of moving, yeah. whether it's hip hop or music. Yeah. Um, that that in itself is testament to what you're saying here. Yeah. And um, it's very interesting that only now you're seeing rock and punk as very much the you, you, what you're embodying and getting involved in now when, when it seems to me that actually there's been a lot of pushing against tides and surprised it's only now yeah it's i'm surprised too but <laughs> it got to a point where it's like i had to stand up for myself mm. you know i had to stand up for what i believed in 
in all those faces I was showing in hip hop, mm -hmm. you know, jazz and disco and house and funk, you know, going in those different genres and saying hip hop could be this, hip hop could be that, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. Mm -hmm. And it was like, but if you're gonna stand up for yourself and really hit it hard, like really strong, in a in a structured way mm -hmm. where people go, well, I know what this is. Clearly, this is what this is. Mm -hmm. It's rock and punk, you know. It's like those those are the those are the that's the genre where you really go balls to the wall. You know, you don't groove around. You don't just groove around mm -hmm. or jazz around mm -hmm. and skip through notes and get verbally acrobatic and yeah. tricky yeah. or in your feelings and you, you just wake up and clap it. <laughs> You know what I mean? <laughs> and big up DMC at this point because um, he definitely was, you know, at the Run DMC camp, he was most definitely uh, into his heavy metal and rock, you know, motel, Motehead and the like. Yeah. You know, this, this, this relationship between uh, rock, heavy, uh, heavy metal and hip hop has always been there. That's always yeah, been there. Yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, you know, hip hop was getting like, you know, a push out the way, like, we don't accept you. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. And, and, and and punk rock was like, we don't accept you. Mm. You know what I mean? We don't want this mainstream. You know what I mean? We want to be hard and loud. We don't want to be soft for the radio. Mm -hmm. And and both of them turned up the volume. You know what I'm mm. saying? Pumped up the volume. Mm. You know what I mean? And that's what they have in common. Mm -hmm. You know? And the more I went back to that fork in the road where the two of them were joined together... I was like, man, there really was a time when like hip hop was really like punk rock. Like hip hop wasn't about that bullshit. Really about that. That's right. It wasn't That's right. about that bullshit. Yeah. Like <laughs> there was no rules. It wasn't so narrow. It was just like, yo, I'm going to throw up and do my joint. You mm. know what I'm saying? No apologies. No apologies before they got like bought into... You know, you know, they bought into the industry and started to play the game and get the check. Mm. And it's like, okay, so now you more friends with R and B mm -hmm. and melody and pop. And that doesn't sit right with a lot of people, man. You like know, I get you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Because it actually isn't the same it isn't the same um art form that any of us subscribed to. Yeah. Because it is taken out of our hands. Punk doesn't do that. Right. Real hip hop, real hip hop doesn't do that. Right. And those are the core principles. It's, right. It's for the unspoken. Right. The unheard. Yeah. And I feel like I was an unspoken. Mm. I feel like I was an unheard. You know, I was shielded by my legacy. Mm. Native Ooh. Tongue, yeah. Jungle Brothers, yeah. you know, people who only knew about me through that. Mm. So that was like having a a filter on, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's like, yeah. but deep down inside, I was like, man, yeah. even to myself, I was like, man, there's something stirring up inside you. You better yeah. get it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, that was the, that was the, the form it came out in, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So interesting. It's, it's, I mean, you, you live that, you live that. I'm pretty sure there isn't a day that goes by where you're not reminded of your, past legacy and I I guess you wouldn't want to change it for the world but there's this blessing and a curse where something is so seismic yeah that obviously it it follows you it's a good job it, it was a good thing <laughs> no, 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 not a bad thing yeah. you know some people you know they suffer a lifetime of in, enduring pain because of the habits they've created of a thing they did that went global you know right <laughs> Kanye, for instance, things like that, you know, yeah, 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 for, yeah. For, for a high extreme version. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, man, I was just like, yo, I can't let what I did when I was 15 years old dictate what I'm doing now. Yeah. Nah. Mm -hmm. It's like, yo, get out of the way. Get mm -hmm. out of my way. Mm -hmm. Like, get out of your own way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, much respect to the golden era, much respect to, I, I, I silently move when they book me in, as a DJ and they want that, I silently move in. Of course. And you must and as well. respectfully move in. Yeah. You know what I mean? And do 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 the damn thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then I go back to my bat cave and my dojo mm -hmm. and I fucking scream. <laughs> I scream. And that's what it's all about, man. It's about owning your 
career path, owning your destiny. Yeah, yeah. Not being dictated to yeah. by the past. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's bonkers. Um, at this point, I, I would like to send a rest in peace uh, to Dave. Plug two. Plug two, absolutely. Because, yeah. um, of course, he was a very close friend of yours um, for a period of time, and I'm sure up to the point of his passing. Yeah. Um, what was he like as a character? The last show that we did with um, Dave and Paz was at SOB's, and I walked him outside, and I remember him saying, um, he's like, yeah, that's how it was back, back in the day. Mm when we was in high school, mm. he remembered. You could feel it, you know, before mm. all the accolades and the kudos mm. and the charts and the mainstreaming. Mm. It was like, it was a jam, proper jam. Mm. You know what I mean? In front of your peers. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was like, that was like mm. a good way to sign off. You know what I mean? Like, Oh, that's so good to hear. Yeah, yeah I was like, yeah, cool. Mm. You felt what I felt. Yeah. We felt that. Yeah. Cool. We good. Mm. To infinity and beyond, you know? Yeah. There's just certain things that, like, because I know what it feels like to, like, see people go off in their own direction, come into their own, go in their own direction, mm. and then you kind of feel left hanging. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was always like, mindful of that when I was going into this next phase of my creativity mm -hmm. that I was going to you know into that phase neutral as possible mm -hmm. to the where I just came from it wasn't going to be like up oh, chop I'm doing this now yeah you know like I can't associate with y'all you know I, I'm sorry I'm too busy you know it's like Nah, there's a way to respectfully move forward, you know what I mean, and answer your next call. Yeah, it doesn't have to be 3.0 and you disappear. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So I, I learned my lesson from being the person that that happened to mm -hmm. or happened for. So I was like, okay, cool. All right. I'm going to correct that a little bit, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So... Yeah, in that sense, it's like I get on stage for the hip hop with joy, for the catalog, for the legacy. I get on stage with joy mm -hmm. for the fans and do that. And then I go home and scream. Yeah. But also hip hop. And then I'm bringing that into the public slowly but surely. You know what I mean? But with the right peoples around me. You know what I'm saying? The people uh, yeah. that understand that, that scream. Yeah, and to add value to what you're saying there, which I, th I think really ties it up, is hip hop was never a, a restrictive culture that it became. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, like what the fuck? Who the fuck are you to tell yeah. us what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, the only way I could get out of that, you see what you just did? The only way I could get out of that was in my punk spirit. Exactly. Which is like fuck you. Yeah. I'm doing this. You know what I mean? Like, fuck you. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to do nothing fancy to try to be super mainstream and to have, like, gazillions of fucking, what they call them shit, streams and mm -hmm. shit like that mm -hmm. to, to make you respect what I'm saying. Yeah. Nah. Fuck that. Fuck you. I'm going to say it on the ground floor. And the only way I could outlet that musically was through fucking punk rock. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? For, for, the complete opposite. To be of, hardcore. The complete opposite of what hip hop was about. They, they were actually they were actually t trying to dial that down. They were trying to dial down the the act the censor. Yeah. Fucking censor. Yeah. A genre that should never be censored. Yeah. And you so you had to go to another place to actually yeah uncensor that shit. Yeah, because isn't that something? Yeah, because it's either you go underground and you with the backpackers and you go. <laughs> You, you 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 complain about the mainstream and you say I'm not that I'm not that and I'm not that and you all smooth with the groove, but you ain't screaming. Mm. You're just going along to get along. You know what I mean? You're just kind of like yeah. uh, self alienating. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like you 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 like I'm right, I'm over here. Mm. You backing yourself into a corner. Yeah. And that's cool. That's all right. That's all right. 
But I'm 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 a loud dude. Mm. I got a lot of energy. Mm. I can't sit there and nod my head to boom bap no, yeah. and, and say the same narrative over and over and over again. But I got too much fire in me, you know what I'm saying? But but I'll say this much I mean, actually at this point, big shout out to Hooch and the Undisputed Crew. Shout this, out to Hooch. This is why we were here. Uh and uh we'll get into the subject matter of how Word you up. met Hooch there because well. <laughs> that was the whole story in itself. But um uh you were at the uh um Undisputed champs that we were yeah. playing at last night. Yeah. Um, it stands to reason that when you are a b boy at heart, yeah, going to one of those events to us is yeah. so second nature because that's what we. Th these are our. It's almost like our our, our morals. The our, our ground. Uh, this is we we are this. This yeah. is this is our thing. Yeah. Not to say that we don't fuck with other things because yeah. fucking with other things and bringing it back home is yeah. exactly what it's all about. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. I, th I think people have a tendency of having an expectation to seeing the likes of yourself. I forgot Baby Bam inside the place. Of course, because he's, he's Jungle Brothers. But actually, no, you're going to the well. That's it. To, to get the water. That's it. That's it. I'm not resting on my laurels. I'm not having a Groundhog Day. Mm -hmm. I'm not reading from the same script mm -hmm. that people, when they're talking to me, I'm like, that's that same script. Yeah. Respect to it all, but I'm not doing that. Mm. I'm filling the well. I'm doing the work. Mm. I'm doing the graft. Mm -hmm. I'm not waiting for the the limousine to pick me up and the uh, the money that I think that my legacy is worth. I'm not doing that. It's a waste of fucking time. It never gets you anywhere. Nah, nah. Makes you feel more bitter. Makes nah, you more bitter. I'm lazy. doing my twenty miles right now. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Why you here? I'm doing my dips and my Bulgarian dips and all of that shit. Like I'm doing my work. You know what I'm saying? Mm. What I'm saying like I'm putting it in. Like I'm getting it in. And well. I'm grafting on me, you know what I'm saying? I'm not fighting hip hop's battles. I'm fighting my battles. Is that an honor? Is what? Is that an honor? To fight my own battles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Because you can fight hip hop's battles and watch people just go this way, go that way. And it's like, oh. Yeah. You'll never be pleasing everybody. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. Oh, actually, there ain't no teamwork in this, really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, people are on their own. Let me go figure my shit out. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. I know exactly what let you mean. Let me just go figure my you shit out. Yeah, I'll, yeah, yeah. You can, you can only figure you because you can't figure anyone else. I gave you guys 35 years. Yeah. And you want to when you when you want me to show up with the with the Jungle Brother cake, I'm there on time. Mm -hmm. Sound check at five o'clock. Doors at seven. Stage at nine. Mm -hmm. Back in my hotel room by ten thirty. Up doing dips first thing. God, I fucking my man that. doesn't get doesn't get better than that though. Surely, like that. But way. I'm not gonna hang on the block with you. Yeah. I'm not gonna party with you. I'm not getting in romantic encounters with you. I'm not drinking with you. I'm not doing drugs with you. I'm not talking about the past with you. Mm. I'm not reminiscing, stout, none of that. You're here to work and create. I'm here to work with the universe. 35 years ago, it was two turntables and a microphone that the universe bestowed upon me. Today, it's drums, bass, guitar. And I'll say this much because obviously uh, I, I was privy to a, 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 a selection of links that you sent through with the new projects that you're on. Um, I... I my mind veered towards a Lenny Kravitz kind of approach of the looseness of the production. And, the, and I, I say that with, you know, it's rare. You, you know, it's, yeah. it's easier said than done. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Especially when you've got, you know, production values that are out there in the world. To keep that looseness and yeah. that, that funk, it's really it's few and far between these days. But, you know, there, this angst that you are speaking of. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely there. Like you can hear it. Yeah. Um, and also the other thing I really loved about it was that it was definitely Bam's voice, but it was, but it had a it had a sense of almost like a rockabilly grit to it. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really dug it. It was you could tell that it, it was just so. It felt like it felt off the cuff. Yeah. Yeah, it's dope. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it is. I, I I believe in the visceral. I believe in the visceral. I do the visceral. Mm. That's what I do. In hip hop, they call that going to the studio and jam out. Mm. But it's visceral. You know what I mean? Mm. And 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 when you have that healthy amount of tension, that friction, in those angular chords on the guitar. And those speedy drum rolls and crashes on the drums, mm. and they, 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 that friction in between is where I put my voice. Mm-hmm. God, that's good. And yeah. that's what I sound like when I'm when I'm cursing people out, mm-hmm. which I, I, I rarely do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's my cathartic release. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that's what I put on the microphone. So it's like that is like, and it's a reflection of like. My body changed. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that's the best bit because that's a good instrument in itself. When you hear it later down the line, yeah, that's what caught me. Is like, oh fucking, hell. it feels it feels like a next, the next step, the yeah. next you. Yeah, my body Great. changed from from jogging mm. twenty miles and and stuff like that, and, and and you know five hours long. Like my lungs opened up. Mm-hmm. You know, when I yell, I don't get hoarse. Mm-hmm. It comes from a deeper. Part from my depths of my soul, you Deep, know what I mean. The right word. And I, you know, my my grandparents they're from the south, so it's like I sometimes when I hear myself yelling and stuff like that, when I'm like I, this, the southern part comes out, like I call it the gutter bucket. You know, Dylan got a bit of it, bit of it and BB King got a bit of it. You know, you're not focused on the way you pronounce the words. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I call it grease on the spoon. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Like Nirvana had that mm. when he's like, yes. You know what I'm saying? I that, do know that exactly. That primitive, what you mean. that primal scream. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know act, just acts of complete and utter. Uh, just, uh, yeah, it's balls to the wall. It is, yeah. You know, and I don't want people to think I'm screaming all over the record because you know my bro Jai, you know, he definitely edited me on that because I was I was wilding, but I it was just to get it out, and yeah. then we got it into a nice happy place yeah. where it was the right thing, you know, yeah. where it was me, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it has so much, any, my lungs were so open for this because during the whole album, I was running with the Bridge Runners in Brooklyn, oh. you know, they, you know, there's these running groups now that's oh, all yeah. over the place, it's like, like crews, like the movie Warriors, you know what I mean? Really? All over the world. That happens, like, yeah? Yeah, all over New York. Well, is, like a, is there like a scene for it? Is it a yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah, really? they meet on certain days and run. Really? So I, 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 tagged along, I tagged along with a couple of groups. Stuff here. This winter, you know what I mean? Did you? When I got to New York and... How many times did you do that a week? Uh, at one point, it was three times a week. And then once on my own, like, so it was four times a week. Yeah, I saw Master Ace doing a lot of cycling and stuff. He, he's shout out to him. Mike Says, Bridge Runners. Yo, know, big Mike Says, hold tight. Yeah, um, Bridge Runners, huh? Yeah, I, I fucking hell. Yeah, Master Ace, he does a lot of cycling and such. Um, and I see a couple of other cats that are doing a lot of extracurricular activities. Yeah. Um, but I didn't know that was a. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, I mean, like you know, it, it just it helped with the breathing. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, I grew up with asthma, and I found that the more I jogged, the less attacks I had. The better it gets. Yeah, I didn't need I didn't need my medicine and nothing like that. So it was like, this is a healthy thing to do. But then when I had to get one, then when I get in the booth, I'm not looking for all this, like, 20,000 syllables in a line. I, I just need a few syllables to speak my mind. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, some, of the, some of the most poignant... The vocalists, particularly in punk and and metal, yeah. are the kind of characters that actually say a hell of a lot less. Yeah, less is more. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm a big like Napalm Death fan. Yeah, that's exactly. I mean, like, they don't actually say. You can't even distinguish what they say. They just fucking angry as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Those are levels. Yeah. Those are levels. Like the b boy, uh, b boy and b girl. Championship with yeah. the energy is those levels. I was about to say those levels are crazy. I just don't know how they. I mean, when you talk about you know <sighs> drive and physical agility, that I mean, we saw it at its pinnacle last night, didn't we? I mean, God, Tokyo, fuck, undisputed Tokyo. That's that was my post. Yeah, undisputed Tokyo, undisputed, thousand percent. Like there was kids of twelve years old. That the was, choreography with the group. Oh. Battles eight to eight 
Or seven to seven. I don't know. Wow. That was crazy. Wow. And that the way they, they, way they just all of a sudden out of nowhere formated whoosh, straight yeah. into this thing. You're like, what? Yeah. And walking like zombies and then falling out and then popping up 10 of them. Like, <laughs> and then the, the other team is like, the girls like being tossed from one person yeah. to the next person, yeah, yeah. like, like a martial art film. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, man, it was clever. It was clever and very theatrical. It's in safe hands with the yeah. youth. With the youth. And I really like the energy in the room because it's like, that is a part of hip hop culture, but that shit is punk as fuck. Punk as fuck. You know, it's like energy. Come on, energy. I don't want to see no bellies hanging over the nah. fucking, over your, 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 your what do your you call belt, it? Yeah. Over your belt. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. Dude, I swear to God, I, I don't want to want to see your trophies and your and your and your and your 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 your, your platinums and your your brand and your you know all that. I don't want to see your belly hanging over all yeah. of that. You just yeah. walking around with lights beaming across you. That's the thing I like about punk is the irreverence. Ooh, the iconoclastic shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I do know exactly what you're saying. Shred, please. Yeah. Shred. Who do you think? We'll come back. We'll definitely come back to to the breaking side of things because there's a few moments you spoke there. But but who is the man in the mirror? Who is the person that's in front of you? What is it that we're faced with when? Who are we attacking? When we talk about our creative stance and for an example, punk. Mm-hmm. Being the I'm shouting at the man, mm-hmm. physical or not, what is that thing in front? What is that thing that we're actually facing ourselves with that we're subconsciously attacking? Uh, the punks, or for me? For you. Who is that? Who is that? Th- who and what is that thing that you're you're fighting at? Well, the first thing, which I learned from my songwriting, is. Cliches. Okay. Avoid the cliches. Mm -hmm. Like recognize when they come up and burn them. Mm -hmm. So cliches would be adulation. Mm -hmm. Yo, you a legend. You Mm -hmm. from the golden era. Da 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 da. Mm -hmm. Resting on your laurels. Just Mm -hmm. resting on that. Fuck that. Are you growing though? What are you doing right now? It's important. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That when that comes up, it's like, no, 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 no. Is that the man in the mirror for you? Is that somebody that you're you're pushing away? You're not you don't want to be that thing. I'm breaking the Africa baby bam identity. Okay. I'm breaking the jungle brother identity. Yeah. I'm breaking the golden era identity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm breaking the hip hop identity. Yeah. I'm breaking all of that. Mm-hmm. I'm breaking any name <laughs> on this body mm. and, the, and, the, and the identity that comes with it mm. and the conversations that come with it, mm. the script. Mm-hmm. I'm destroying it so I could see the clear wall mm. with no writing on it. And I'm breaking through that wall. That's what I'm doing. And then going from there. Huh? You want you talk about being original? Yeah, this is it. See, this and this is where you I can't repeat your old tricks. Yeah. There ain't no originality in that. Or your old originals. It's so easy to do that <laughs> and keep getting the check and not checking yourself and going, but what else I got? Yeah, yeah. What else is in what the tank? Yeah. It's funny like fifty years of hip hop, being out in Tokyo. Totally inspired, understanding that in terms of what people, you, you just, it's just the idea of. Even with the 50 years of hip hop, it was like, um, there's only seven months left. Like, what you gonna do next year? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you know, uh, and then, I'm gonna do it my way. How about this? I'm gonna do it my way. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna jog from Chinatown with the bridge runners to Midtown. Say my goodbyes and go from Midtown through Central Park 
to the across 110th Street into Harlem to 145th Street, go across the bridge to the Bronx, South Bronx, past Yankee Stadium at 11 o'clock at night in the freezing cold, right up to Cool Herc's house, 1520 Cedric Avenue. And I'm going to arrive at that building and pay my respects to hip hop, and that's it. Done. God, I love that. <sighs> so while you're doing your TV shows and your documentaries and your inductions and your photo opportunities, and I'm not getting pulled to here and there to show my face in the place. Should that, should that not be celebrated in your mind then? What? Or should that not be celebrated? I'm doing it my way. Gotcha. And I did it through the universe. Mm -hmm. Because when I got to the heart, when I got to Midtown, I was like, I feel like I could keep going. So where am I going? God, that's good. It's basically, it's just, it, it's the, what you've done there is the physical equivocal of what your mind is telling you to do. Yeah. Which is affirmation. Yeah. Sick. I picked up on that voice inside. I was like, so, so where are we going? Mm. Where you want to run to now? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Onwards. I, I want to go back to the home of hip hop. Yeah. I, I'm not waiting for a press junket to do it. I'm going to do it right now. And when I got to the building at 11 o'clock at night, a tenant was coming in and I said, can you take a picture of me in front of the building? And there was a scaffolding that I didn't realize. So they took the picture, but I was like, I don't have like the picture, the address. Yeah. So I waited. I was sweaty, mm. getting cold, all the way in the South Bronx at 11 o'clock at night. And then I said, I'm going to wait 45. I, I waited 45 minutes. And off the elevator came this man, opened the door, and I was like, excuse me, can you take a picture of me in front of the intercom? 1520, Cedric Avenue. He said, sure, 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 no problem. And I was like, this is, the, this is right here. The, this is... Cool Herc's house, right? This is his building, right? He's like, yeah. He pulled out all these keys. He was the superintendent of the building. He said, you want me to take you to the recreation room and then take you to the mural? Stop it. 11.30 at night. 11.30. Sweaty. I'm standing there sweaty. I was like, I missed my opportunity, but I'm going to wait. He came off the elevator. He pulled out all these keys. Meant to be always in the right Walked place, right always at the, the right time. the recreation room to the mural and took my picture for me. I was done. I was like, box tick. That's it. Yeah. I could leave the country. I don't need to be around for this. This is it. Done. God, that is done, so right? fucking good. That's the unit. That's Some the serendipity I'm talking about. Shit. Yeah. That's the serendipity I'm talking about. I did it my way. Yeah. yeah. Like Kid Play said, I yeah. did it my way. Yeah. <laughs> See, there's a lot to be taken from this, ladies and gentlemen. You know what I mean? We're talking to a gentleman that has surpassed, surpassed himself um, and continues to. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. There was a lot going on at the B-Boy Champs last night. Yeah. So far as a lot of the kids, and I say kids respectfully, because they really were. <laughs> like There were some like 13, 14-year-olds that definitely weren't in by the kind of hip hop that spawned such amazing fucking genres like in dance and music and arts, you know, hip hop encapsulates all of that and it constantly grabs new audiences that are inspired by other things that come from a whole different walk of life. Japan, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, it's incredible. It's great. The, the serendipity of this whole event being in Japan is great too because. I came out here with my, with my brother Jai when we finished this project in Bushwick and we was like, yo, Japan's going to feel us with this punk rock shit, you know, like, like, let's go over there first. You know, we felt that in our hearts, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it just so happens that you guys were landing the same day we were. Perfect. That's what we love. So it was like, again, the universe is like, you know, I'm going to give you that bridge. Mm -hmm from where you were to where you are in like a, a good, wholesome way. Like mm. you, you graft and you're going to see the part of the culture that grafts mm -hmm. physically, not pen and paper over beats and, you know, mm -hmm. record deals and battles and streams. Like mm -hmm. 
and lifestyle marketing and all that, like physical people who got to put in the physical work mm. to represent the culture. And how cool is it that you're in a place that will totally and utterly inspire you to go a different direction creatively? Yeah. The, the, the out there is insane. Out there is insane. Dude, my my journal is crazy right now. Mm-hmm. I got two notebooks. I'm f- yeah. What? <laughs> my, every podcast I do is like a journal, bro. This here is my journal. It's, yeah, it blows my mind what, 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 what we're walking in. Right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is... <laughs> we're the so mo- lucky. I'm wa- we're walking around a city in the East Yeah, that has that peace. Yeah, big time. You feel it? I do. I, I, wouldn't, I don't want to leave because I Not- know it's going to be stress when we get back. <laughs> Real talk, right? My man, mm-hmm. my man. It's like, it's not boring. It's just peaceful. Yeah. More people should have it, shouldn't they? Absolutely. So, um, the new music, where can people find it? Well, we're going to debut some of it on your show. Fuck yeah, we are. Come on, son. So that's that's how we're doing. We're doing the drip feed thing. Yeah. Don't. We're not doing the stream thing. Like, you put it out there. We're SoundCloud and all the DSPs. Yeah. Google him. You know who he is. You know what it do. You know what I'm saying? That's the website, Google. We'll, we'll give it <laughs> to the... We'll curate it to the right channels mm. that the universe unfolds for us. Fantastic. Like this, 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 what happened right here. Yeah. And me and Hooch was talking and he was like, yo, I need music for, for, for my events. You know what I mean? Like, I can't clear none of the music that these labels is holding back. Done. I was like, you got me, dog. Like, mm. yo, I got a new album. We own it. Mm. I'll get you that. So that's a good energy to put this project towards. I don't want to just throw mm. that out there for everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. It's not time for that right now. Well, we'll, de- we'll debut on here. Obviously, you can go check it out through uh, Undisputed as well. Um, that's right. And if you want to know more, you can Google it. That's the website. Uh, Af- Africa <laughs> Baby Bam. That's right. That's right. Uh, well, who we're talking to right now is the uh, physical embodiment of what creativity should be, could be, and would be. You just got to get on the ride and get involved and be a part of it, not be... An observer, you understand. Ladies and gentlemen, Africa Baby Bam in the place. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you, Killer Keller. Hasn't that been fun? Ladies and gentlemen, you know what to do. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Um, if you're a newbie, welcome. Tell a friend as well. Um, remember, crime don't pay, but neither do they. All right, don't talk to anyone I wouldn't. You stay lucky, people. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Yay. How was that? All right.